Good morning. It's Trisha with Easy E Mini Trade. And this morning I want to go over the setups from yesterday, Friday the 18th, using the new uh, Kijin line setup from the Ichimoku. And I'll go over NQ, ESMYM, and CL. And if you want more info on that setup, I'm going to be doing a webinar on Wednesday the 22nd at 4 p.m. And I'll also be going over these items here and just go to my website and click on the upcoming webinar um, tab at the top. But I'm going to go over the Ichimoku Kijin line um, new setup in full detail and I'll give the webinar from last month to everybody so they can get a little bit more in-depth explanation about the Ichimoku components because I won't spend a whole lot of time on that during this upcoming webinar. And then I'm going to show you how to use the double stochastics um, for clues on when we're going to get a pullback or a stall. I'll show you how to spot divergence and how you can use it to your advantage at areas of support and resistance. And then I'm going to show you how to use the volume profile to find support and resistance. So if that's something that you typically struggle with, that will be um, really helpful. Because if we know where support and resistance areas are, we can make good decisions on taking the trade entries that we're taking and decide if there's enough room to attempt it or not, or at least use that as our profit target areas or our stops. And then um, I've showed you this a few times already in short little videos. This is very quick, but I'll show you how to use the floor trader pivots to determine um, targets in areas where price has never been before. So that will be on Wednesday the 22nd. Okay, so let's get started. So what you're looking at is NQ on a one minute chart. And I don't have all the Ichimoku components on here. I just um, made the Chico line transparent. So it's just not in a way, but I'll show you how, how you'll use that with the setup as well if, um, if this is something to interest you. But so I'll start here at 9.30 and I typically don't do anything right off the open and this wouldn't have been valid anyway. So we're using the stochastic below to filter out the trades. And so right here you can see that we've got a buy here closing above the Kijin line. Our green line is above the red. Now the thing to remember is that when we get that 40 point gapper between those uh, two stochastic lines, and I'll go over all the settings for the stochastics during the webinar, you guys. Um, so no worries, I will not leave you hanging. So if we were to buy this, we would be expecting price to either stall or pull back to fill up that space. Now when you're looking at that on a time-based chart, generally it takes a long time to, um, to fill that space. Obviously if you're trading off a range chart or a tick chart, you can um, expect a quick reaction when we see that. So realistically, if you were to take this buy, likely it would meander higher as it's going sideways back and forth here, you can see it until it hits the cloud. So anything you do under the cloud, the cloud is going to be your resistance. Anything that you do above the cloud to go short, the cloud is going to be your support. So here we get a short, it's valid. We don't get our 40 point gap until after we're well in. So this one here looks like this one would have been for about, let's say up to the cloud, looks like about six points. What this get to? Yeah, so it looks like about six points. This one here, you short, and you can always look to the left, see where the congestion is, um, and you have an idea where price is going to react again. This one here looks like, let's see, entry 48.50, so maybe three points on that one. And then this is giving you a heads up that it's likely going to stall or bounce because of that 40-point gap. Here, this buy above the Kijin line, not valid because our stochastic does not agree. This one is valid to the downside. Now, this one here, I would have to um, wind up passing on. Well, I put my order in, so let's say I wanted this. So I already know I've got the 40-point gapper, so price is likely to go sideways or um, bounce to fill this space, right? So if, let's say I was going to take it anyway. I put my order in under this candle. Or I've got the arrow right here and the next bar doesn't trigger the entry so for me that would be a pass like I would not you can see it wouldn't have triggered for like four bars later so for me if it doesn't trigger my entry on the very next bar 
after the bar that closes below or above the Keijin line, then it's a pass. Here, a buy into the cloud. So you already know that's risky because there's no room, right, into the cloud. And that one wouldn't have triggered you either. So technically valid, next bar wouldn't have triggered you, so you'd pass. Even if it um, did trigger you, I mean, this would be one that I wouldn't take. I'd either want room up to the cloud, or if I was in the cloud, let's say, and you got a buy and you had a lot of room up to the upper portion, then that's a different story. But this one, basically, everything's telling you that it's probably not going to go. You've got your 40-point gapper here, cloud right above you. Um, here you get a short. Now, this one technically not valid because our green line is above the red, but if you wanted to be aggressive, we already know that price, because of our 40-point gapper, is going to stall or, in this instance, likely go lower to fill up that space. So if you wanted to be aggressive and take that, you could. And then you would just look over here to your left, see where price last reacted. And then you're looking down at the previous day's high as your next um, support. So that would be definitely a more aggressive entry. Here, this one here, setting up as the buy. And again, if you look at this on a smaller time frame, uh, excuse me, a larger time frame, price was pretty sideways um, at, during these um, times. If you can't tell looking at your one-minute chart, always look at something bigger to get a clear view of the overall um, direction of the market. Here, getting the buy. So once again, we're getting a buy, but we got that 40-point gapper into the cloud, so like under the cloud. So likely what's going to happen is price is going to pull back, move lower, right, to fill up that space, or go sideways. And so you can see it basically goes sideways until it runs into the cloud. It would have paid, um, let's see, 42 would have been your entry, and let's say the best that you would have gotten out of that um, is like is three points. <clears throat> All right, so that's NQ. And now I just want to give you a different perspective. So I'm going to change this to a 12 range chart. And so you can use a 12 range chart and you're going to do the same thing. You can use a tick chart. You're going to use the same thing. <clears throat> so this is 930 right off the open. Um, actually, it's before the open. So likely you'd pass on it and it's above the cloud. But um, if you if you wanted it technically valid, literally at 930 here would be your next buy valid. You'd use the cloud as your resistance area. So. Ignore these arrows because that was off the one minute chart. Here, the short inside the cloud would be valid. If you wanted to take it, you would use the lower end of the cloud as your um, support area or target area. Here, the buy looks good. Valid here, short here, in the cloud. You have to use the cloud as support. Not really a whole lot of room there. And you're going to find that the less direction the market has, the more sideways the cloud will be. And then you'll find price basically teetering back and forth above and below um, in a sideways market. Um, this one here, the buy, not valid because we're an oversold here. Here, the short. Um, now, technically, it is valid right when it sets up because it's still an oversold and you got a 40-point gap. So that one actually looks pretty good. All right, so just same setup, just different perspective on a range chart. All right, so now let me get to um, YM. Now, this one I left the Chico line on, and that's the blue line that you see here. So this is the one that's always plotting 26 bars behind our um, the current bar. So I'm not going to go over that right now and how you can use it, but I will definitely go over it more during um, the webinar. So again, ignoring um, right here at the open. So here, close above, it's valid. You're under the cloud, so you use the cloud area as your target. Here, it's valid take the short, and then use, you just would look to the left, and you can see this area holding. So you'd have to at least consider that this is likely the area of first reaction. Here, buy is not valid. Short right here, not valid. This buy here where I've got the arrow is valid because we've got our red line in overbought, so still technically valid. Now, notice the difference here on YM as compared to NQ. 
Notice how the cloud is a lot skinnier and price is trading below it, above it, below it. So when you see that skinny little cloud there, that's just a heads up that price is um, sideways. And if you want a different view, look at it on a bigger chart like your 15 minute chart. This pretty much tells the story, right? Very sideways with no overall real direction, right? So just basically it's, it's common sense with support and resistance if you wanted to take it or not take it. And the cloud is very helpful in determining that. So here you get a short, you're above the cloud, it's a valid short, and so you'd have to at least be aware that the cloud would be your first possible support area. And obviously, like I said, if it's a skinny cloud, it has a good chance of trading through it. And then you can always just look to the left and see the area where price was last reacting. So if I was to look at this, what I would do is I would just kind of see this little area here. And I would probably, the last time it got stuck here was right around this spot here. So I'd probably go above these little candles here. And you can see that's right in the midst of things. And then I would go under here. So those would be the two areas that I would look for um, that where price would react under the cloud if it could get through. Here you get a buy literally in the cloud. Even if you wanted it, it would have never triggered you on the next bar. So once, if you were going to take it in the cloud, literally right at the top of the cloud here, um, knowing that that could be a resistance area. The next bar would not have triggered you, so you would cancel it. Here's a short. Now, this one here, technically not valid because our green line's above the red, but we got that 40-point gapper. So if you wanted to be aggressive, you could take it, but you still are going to have to deal with the lower end of that cloud, right? So likely you've got another setup that you can look to get in using some other setup other than this um, Ichimoku. So once price starts to move, realistically, if you're trading off a range chart, um, trading the slinky or the other one minute setup, likely you had a setup down in this area. Um, here is a buy. And again, ignore the blue line. That's the Chico line. This buy valid. We got our 40 point gapper. So we know that likely price is going to um, go sideways or move lower to fill up that space. And so you're under the cloud. So you can see it does um, it does trigger you and it goes sideways basically into the cloud and fills up that space. So you can look at this on another view as well um, on a range chart if you like. And let's look at ES real quick. And here is ES on a one minute chart. So if you look at the 15 looking at it after the fact, you can see that it was a very um, sideways day, right? You had a couple of attempts. You had an attempt to go lower here and then you had an attempt to go higher here, um, but overall pretty sideways day. So just like YM, you can see we've got a skinny little cloud. So you'll find that price will trade um, again, both sides of the cloud. And the Chico line can really be helpful. Um, so that's the blue line here. And this is the one that's, like I said, always plotting 26 periods behind. And I will go over how you can use that. So where are we here? Um, actually, I'm a little off here, so let's get rid of that one because this is actually the bar that closes um, below and it's not valid here. Here we close above and cloud would have to be our at least initial area of um, reaction, like where we would consider a possible reaction area. And again, if the cloud is really skinny, not as relevant because price can get through it really easily. So buy there, looks like it's good for um, a point. Sell here, it's, it's valid, was coming out of overbought. You're in the cloud, so you'd use the lower end of the cloud. And realistically, you can just look over here and have a pretty good idea where price is likely to react. This is ES, by the way. Um, buy here, not valid. Um, short here, not valid, because of our being in overbought here. Short here is valid above the cloud. Once again, you'd use the cloud as your um, first possible reaction area, then just look to the left. You can see this area here, obviously, where price has been struggling. You can see it here, here, here. So if you did take this short and it got through the cloud, likely you'd be anticipating somewhere in that area as support. Buy here into the cloud. It's technically valid. Cloud reacts, pulls back. Close below here, not valid. Close above here, not valid. 
because I'm looking at the stochastic. The stochastic is our filter to filter out the valid or invalid trades. Short here, I'm off here by a hair, but short here, technically valid. And then you'd be looking at the same last reaction area. And then if you want a different view on this, and then here's a buy into the cloud, 40 point gapper, so likely price goes sideways until it hits the cloud. Um, this short here, I think I might have this off a little bit. I think it's actually back here. I think it's that one. I just put my arrow in the wrong spot. And again, if you want a different view, let's change it to a four range and see what it looks like. So what's a four range look like? If we look at that, I mean, sideways is sideways, right? So you still have to be aware. Um, you might have more um, setups, but that's not always a good thing. So here would be your buy here, 40 point gapper, price pulls back to fill up some of that space before it attempts higher. You do get another buy right here into the cloud. Um, short here, valid into the support, doesn't really go anywhere. Um, ES, I'm not a fan of this on the four range, but, you know, check it out. Just play with it. See what you like best. And you can do a three range if the market's slow, um, but the one minute seems to work best. Um, and let's do CL real quick. So CL, this is the um, March contract. Just FYI. And this is just looking at it um, after 930. This is nice pre-market as well. Um, here you get a buy under the cloud. Cloud would be resistance. So let's just see what would that be. Looking at a tick above that, you're looking at 69 with what was this up here? Let's just see what that actually got to. Got to 78. And obviously it kept going up to the previous day's high. Um, here are the short in the cloud. So you'd have to look at the lower end of the cloud at least as your support area. And then you're looking at the close. Here the buy under the cloud. Cloud would be resistance. Actually, you're under yes, the previous day's um, close area, but you can see this bar closes above that previous day's close, this line here. But literally, you'd be taking that into the cloud. And this one still has the Chico line as well. Um, the Kijun line is the purple, smoother line. Um, here you get a short in the cloud, 40-point gapper. So realistically, lower end of the cloud has to be your first consideration of support. And the fact that you've got that 40-point gapper, it's giving us a heads up for possible bounce or sideways move until this fills up. Okay, you guys, I hope you find that helpful. And I will go over this in a lot more detail on Wednesday. Hope you have a great day. Take care.